Okay, so uh, this is the last part pretty much of um, the algebra section of complex number and we're going to talk about thirds. So, um, basically an irrational number can be written like this, a plus bx um, root c, um, where a, b, c are rational numbers and what I mean by a rational number is it can be written as a fraction. Um, so, for example, one half is a rational number. Root two is not a rational number because it cannot be written as a fraction. And uh, if you remember, ask me and I will prove to you that root two is irrational in class. Anyway, that is called a third. And there are some rules that apply to thirds. Uh, so if I have a, rule, a, third, a root of a product, that equals the um, roots separated and um, multiplied together. If I have the root of a quotient, then again, we can separate them out and divide them individually. Now we've said that a plus b root c is a third, um, and then we talk about the conjugate, and we're going to talk a lot about the conjugate when we come on to complex numbers, but the conjugate third is basically the root is, that's, that is, that sign there is changed. So if it's positive, it goes to negative. If it's negative, it goes to positive. Okay. Now, the great thing about the conjugates is that if you multiply a third by its conjugate, you get rid of the square roots. Okay. It becomes a rational number. So uh, here we had 1 plus 2 root 3. Very original. And I multiplied it by the conjugate, 1 minus root 2, 3. Now, you'll notice, if you, hopefully you'll notice, that that looks like difference of two squares, okay? So obviously one times one is one, one times uh, two root three is two, oh, sorry, negative two root three is negative two root three, two root three times one is two root three, and two root three times two root three is negative two root three all squared. So obviously the one goes, these cancel out, which is what you would expect because we're gonna be left with no thirds, um, and 2 root 3, now remember we said you square the 2 and then square the 3, so it becomes 4 times 3 which is 12, so that is minus 11. If we have a third in a denominator, um, we don't like it. Um, it's very difficult to do stuff with thirds in the denominator, and by stuff I mean separating them out, multiplying, dividing, all of that sort of thing. So what we do is we, we essentially remove it, and this process is called rationalising the denominator. And basically we multiply it by its third, but I have given a conjugate rather. I have done an example for you. So um, here's my example. I've got 2 plus 3 root 5 over 3 minus 2 root 2. Fair enough. I'm looking at the denominator. I'm not interested in the numerator, I just want to have a look at the denominator and I want to get rid of these thirds because I don't want them there. So I'm going to multiply by 3 plus 2 root 2. Obviously whatever I do to the bottom I must do to the top because it's a fraction, it has to stay um, equivalent, so essentially what you do is you multiply, you're multiplying by 1. So anyway, multiply at the top and you can check to make sure that I've done that correctly. This one being when we do the 3 root 5 times uh, 2 root 2, 2 times 3 gives me my 6, root 5 times root 2 is root 10. Okay. On the bottom, obviously I get my 3 times 3, which gives me my 9. I know that the 3 root 2, 2 root 2 and the negative 2 root 2 times 3 are going to cancel out, so I don't even bother with them. Okay. And my next one is I want negative because we know it's going to be negative, this term, that last term there, squared. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So 4 times 2 gives me 8. 9 minus 8 conveniently is 1, and so my answer in this particular instance is just the numerator. Um, sometimes it will be, sometimes obviously there may well be um, a number at the bottom. Um, and yeah, so it's quite an important thing. I would be prepared to say 
90% confidence, something like that will come up on the um, end of year exam. Last bit, I just thought I'd throw this in, it's simplifying thirds, and sometimes we are asked to, um, and sometimes you're asked to simplify thirds within a rationalisation question. Um, and it's just a case of breaking it down, and I have done it to the nth degree here. Ultimately, you want the simplest form. I wouldn't expect you to show every single step the way I have done. Um, I would expect you to do a fair amount of this in your head. So I decided to choose 32, and I said, right, okay, it is 4 times 8. Fantastic. Um, well, I know I can split that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 8. I know what the square root of 4 is, it's 2. So I've now got 2 root 8. And I go, well hang on, 8 is 4 times 2. So it becomes 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 times 2 times root 2, which is 4 root 2. And 32 is 4 root 2. So I suppose the key message I'm saying here is you need to think about, when you're breaking this number down, you need to think about square numbers. For example, I'm just going to grab a pen. If I had um, so I was looking at that, um, there would be very little point in me going, oh well that's alright, it's 2 times 12. Because they're not actually getting me anywhere. I'd be far better, because I've actually got other steps I have to go and do then. It's far better to go, well that's okay, that is 4 times 6. And that just then gives me, sorry, 2 root 6, which is what 24 is. Okay, so, or the root of 24 I should say. Um, so think about, when you're simplifying these, think about it in terms of square numbers, not in terms of how obtuse can I make my simplification. Cool, and that's pretty much it, and hopefully I will see you next week.